Welcome back to the Parkinson's Doctor channel. My name is Dr. Amor Rodriguez. I am a neurologist and movement disorder specialist in Orlando, Florida. Uh, I practice at the uh, Neurology One Clinic. And uh, today I will be starting a series of videos explaining how is it that your doctor diagnoses Parkinson's disease? What are you, what is the information that your doctor is obtaining and putting together just to try to make the diagnosis and eventually come up with a treatment for a person that he, be, he or she uh, believed that might have Parkinson's disease. So uh, what I'm going to do is I want to do multiple videos speaking about the multiple stages of the diagnosis of a person with Parkinson's disease. And uh, eventually I will actually move on to speak about all the treatments that are available to, uh, for people with Parkinson's disease. Before I, I start with today's videos, um, I want to do two things. In first place, I, I want to uh, thank everyone that has been uh, making comments and uh, providing some feedback about the, the videos. Uh, this is very helpful because it helps me understand what is the kind of information that you would like to know. So I am very thankful for that. And then um, in second place, I want to thank all of you that have uh, subscribed to the channel. Uh, this is the best way to obtain some information uh, right away as soon as the new videos are, are published. So make sure that, you know, you just take a second and uh, subscribe here. Just hit that subscribe button. There is no no fee on the on the uh, uh, subscription. It's just for you to receive a um, notification when new videos are available. And uh, with that, let's get going. So today I will be speaking about the prodromal symptoms of Parkinson's disease. And, and prodromal is written P-R-O-D-O-M-A-L, the prodrome, right? And we all know that Parkinson's disease is a brain disorder and it causes a problem with movement, balance, coordination, and other functions. And uh, most people start having symptoms between 55 and 60, uh, and then they are diagnosed with Parkinson's disease between 60 and 65. However, be aware that Parkinson's disease is not an easy to diagnose condition because we don't have a specific test, right? We have other medical conditions that we test you for A, B, C, or D, and the test is positive or negative, and now we make a diagnosis, right? You know, you, you might have Lyme disease, you might have um, the, diabetes, depending on how high the blood sugar, or, or you might have an, a problem with your prostate. However, this doesn't exist for Parkinson's disease. And doctors have to rely on the patient's medical history, symptoms, and physical and neurological examination in order to make a diagnosis. Now, despite these challenges, there are some signs that may indicate that someone has Parkinson's disease before the typical symptoms appear. And I'm going to tell you the, what are the typical prodromal symptoms that we see in the community that has Parkinson's disease. So in first place, let's talk about losing the sense of smell. So losing the sense of smell is one of the uh, first symptoms uh, uh, in people that are uh, developing Parkinson's disease. And, uh, and uh, this is sometimes hard to, to appreciate, right? It is not until something big happens that, that some people say, wow, you know, I, I, I have been losing my sense of smell. The second symptom is constipation. And, and we all know constipation, difficulty going to the bathroom, you know, uh, it's two or three days before uh, uh, the patient will have a second bowel movement that week and this will become a pattern. And then uh, the next one is REM sleep behavior disorder. And I will go back to REM sleep behavior disorder uh, because I still have two more symptoms that are fairly common before a person is actually diagnosed with Parkinson's and that is depression or anxiety and the next one is fatigue, and in some people, low blood pressure. Now, be aware that these symptoms may not be specific to Parkinson's disease, but they can be clues that something is wrong with the brain. And if you have any of these symptoms, then you should talk to your doctor about them just to have an initial evaluation. Once again, the doctor or the fact that you have the symptoms uh, will not uh, be diagnostic of Parkinson's disease. However, it is worth looking into this. Now, I mentioned a, a fancy word there, REM, sleep behavior disorder. And what is this? 
So REM, sleep behavior disorder, and we, we call this RBD for short. This is a condition where people start acting out their dreams during the ri- rapid eye movement stage of sleep. And normally during the, R- the REM sleep, the REM sleep, the muscles are paralyzed to prevent movement, but people that have RBD, RBD the paralysis is lost and people may kick, punch, shout, or get out of bed while dreaming. And this can be dangerous for themselves and this can can be dangerous for their bed partners. You wouldn't believe how many patients tell me that, you know, the the significant other punched him in the face or another part of the body or has been kicking them. Um, And and this is something that has been going on for a few years before the patients uh, finally come to the doctor. Now, RBD is more common in older men and it can be a sign of Parkinson's disease or other neurodegenerative disorder. And in fact, up to 80% of people with RBD may develop Parkinson's disease or something similar to Parkinson's disease within 10 years. This is the reason why RBD can be considered a prodromal symptom of Parkinson's disease. It doesn't mean that you have it, that you will have Parkinson's, but there might be a higher incidence that is something worth looking into. Now, what are the most common early clinical symptoms? Now we're talking about the symptoms that we see, what typically brings a person to the clinic for an evaluation about Parkinson's disease. So the most common early clinical symptoms of Parkinson's that lead uh, uh, patients to look for medical attention are the motor symptoms. And these are tremors. So the tremor is the typical shaking or trembling of a body part. Usually it is in the hand or the arm, and this occurs when the person is typically at rest. That is one of the characteristics of Parkinson's disease. The tremors happen at rest, and it goes away initially when the person is moving. With disease progression, sometimes the tremor will be bad enough that it will be persistent even when the person is using their hand, but in most people in the initial stages, the Parkinson's tremors is at rest, and when the person is moving, typically tremors Uh, goes away or mitigates. It reduces in the severity. The other thing that we see is uh, rigidity, and rigidity means stiffness or tightness of the muscles that makes movement difficult, and sometimes it can make the movement uh, painful, the muscles painful. Bradykinesia, which is slowness or reduction of movement that affects walking, talking, riding, and other activities. And then there is another symptom, which is postural instability, which is a loss of balance or coordination that increases the risk of falling. Now, you do not need to have all the symptoms to be diagnosed with Parkinson's disease. And uh, when we actually look at the criteria, most people with Parkinson's disease are diagnosis in order to make a diagnosis, they, they must have bradykinesia, which is the slowness. So that is the, the symptom that seems to be universal in the Parkinson's disease community. And then they need to have at least one of the other symptoms, the tremors, the rigidity, or the postural instability. And when the symptoms happen, typically one side of the body seems to be more affected than the other. So so that's actually something very interesting. The symptoms usually start on one side of the body and then eventually over time will begin spreading to the other side. And they can vary in severity and frequency depending on the person and the stage of the disease. And they can also be affected by medication, stress, sleep, and other factors. So these symptoms can interfere with daily life, even in these early stages of Parkinson's disease, and they might cause disability and distress. And this is why it is so important to seek medical attention if you notice any of these symptoms. So let's go ahead and summarize this, because most times times people come to the clinic because they, they, they were noticed to have a tremor, right? And uh, typically your doctor will try to do some uh, maneuvers to try to make that tremor happen. Uh, He will try to distract you, maybe make you even a little bit anxious in order to make the tremor show up. And once again, it will be on one side of the body more more so than than the other side. Now, be aware that not everybody with Parkinson's disease will have uh, tremors. And in my clinic, about... uh, uh, I have to say, uh, you know, 60 to 70% of the people uh, present with a classic tremor that they have with Parkinson's uh, disease. About um, 25 to 30% of the people uh, 
don't, don't have tremor. They actually come more with stiffness and lowness, and then about 10% comes with a serious issue with ambulation. That could happen in some people with Parkinson's disease. So once again, the, the prodrome, your doctor will be asking you, listen, you know, have you had any vivid dreams? That is the most common question that probably would your doctor will be asking in that particular situation. Uh, you will be asked about uh, depression. You will be asked about anxiety. You will be asked about the volume of your voice, right? You know, have you noticed any changes in the volume of your voice? Uh, trouble swallowing your handwriting. So many times uh, people's handwriting uh, begins to get smaller. This is what we call uh, micrographia. So, you know, trying to put all this uh, 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 together is uh, highly suggestive that a person might have Parkinson's disease. So, so now we will be moving to the second video, right? I'm going to make a quick pause here. Uh, I want you guys to understand this uh, uh, well. And uh, let me tell you that I am actually posting a summary of this video. Everything that I'm saying today, I will have a summary on our sister website, uh, learnaboutparkinson.com. And uh, you will see this in one of the uh, presentation slides. Make sure that you go there so you will see everything that I just mentioned uh, uh, right now, and you might be able to take a look at them, uh, and uh, you know maybe even share it with uh, uh, your your children or any other family member or friends that they might want to learn more about Parkinson's disease. Now the next video is about once we suspect that you have Parkinson's disease, what are the testing that are going to help us understand if in fact you have Parkinson's disease. Once again, thank you so much for for uh, your attention. I hope that you're learning in these videos and they're helping you uh, understand better what is Parkinson's disease and what we can do to make your quality of life better. Thank you very much and see you very soon in the next video.